there and welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Today's fountain pen, Back from the Dead, is this Waterman Skywriter from the 1940s in green marble celluloid. This pen and its 14 karat gold nib were manufactured in Canada. I bought this pen last summer at an antique store with two other Waterman celluloid pens of the same era. One that's already been restored in this gorgeous honey-colored celluloid and another that's still waiting its turn for salvation in this gray marble. I was a little suspicious about how this pen would perform on the page and I waited until I had completely restored it to get ink in that nib and put it to paper. I had quite the reaction when I tried it for the first time. So I'll see what this pen looked like before and after its resurrection right now. Okay, let's get to it. Here's what the pen looked like when I bought it last August. I'm already spending a fortune. Let's get this one as well. This is another Waterman, but this one is called a Skyrider. There it is, in quotes, Skyrider. Yeah, it feels like it has a sack in it. Again, 14 karat gold. That nib doesn't look like it needs much attention. It's very fine, but again, beautiful celluloid. And these look like 19th, late 1930s to me, I'm just guessing. And here's what it looks like now. Now I didn't do a complete restoration and polish on the cap here because I wanted to show the difference between the cap uh, the way it was and the barrel the way it's been polished up. But when I complete this video, I'll do that same micro mesh and polish job on the cap as well. So let's take a look at the restoration process in some time-lapse video and then I'll talk about some of the history of this pen, go over its parts and features, some size comparisons and some measurements and then provide a writing sample and then I'll give my thoughts on this resurrection. So I just picked up a number of supplies, two new sacks for Parker Vacuumatics because I just bought one on eBay today. And I've got another one that needs one and some latex sacks. I got these from 15 pens, which is in Toronto and some, uh, some good prices and excellent service from Scott Newman. Thanks Scott. One of the things I purchased was this nib smoothing block, nib reshaping block, because I've got a couple of pens that are going to need some attention. So let's assess the damage here. I'm going to try to polish up that hardware, try to polish up that band a little bit. And there's a lot of uh, scratching and wear on that celluloid. So I'm going to try some micro mesh on that. And I'm going to try to protect that as very, very light engraving. So I've already heated the section uh, with my heat gun very, very carefully. Again, touching it to my lips every couple of seconds. And because celluloid and shellac have a very close melting temperature so we want that shellac to melt in there but not the celluloid so i've actually been able to get it off and taken the sack off which was desiccated around here and cleaned up that nipple there and cleaned off all the shellac there wasn't a lot of it so it actually came off fairly easily but this section also has some gouges in it so i'm going to try to micro mesh those away but i'm going to use my knockout block to knock that ebonite feed out of there get that nib out and uh, see how i can restore that so i've made myself a homemade knockout block out of a couple of 3d printed ink buddy pieces and a socket wrench and just place that in the hole and the collar of the section sits in there and there's a hole at the bottom of that that's why it's sitting on two levels here so the nib doesn't touch anything as it goes through. And I've got a, an Allen wrench that's the right size here to knock that out. And a little rubber mallet. That was dead simple. Almost fell out. And there's the nib. It's in good shape. And the feed. Still a lot of old ink on there. But I'll polish that up and clean out the section. And while that section's off of there, I'm going to try to micro mesh it to get these gouges out of it. So let's polish up that nib first. That's always the first thing I want to see. Gold is so terrific on fountain pens because it doesn't matter how old it is, that gold will polish right up like it's brand new. Now let's see what we can do 
on this cap band. Again, we check it often because I don't want to go through that plating. We did a lot better. And what about that clip? It already looks like it's grassing a bit, so I'm going to be very gentle with this. Yeah, it's starting to lose its gold right around those edges. It shined up nicely, but it's uh, nice and shiny anyway. So I think next up we'll polish up the cap and barrel and see how we can get that to gleam. Now the barrel and the cap have these sort of micro abrasions on them. Now you can see that or not. It's just from years and years of use. You see those tiny, tiny nicks and scrapes. So I don't want to be too aggressive on this. I'm going to start at 3200 and see whether I can get those nicks and scrapes out of there. You can see through that there's still some nicks and cuts and things like that. So I'm going to have to go up a grade to 2400 to see whether I can get those scratches out. Yeah, that's looking pretty clean right there. So that's as abrasive as I want to get. So there, so there's after some micro meshing and some rubbing compound polishing. It's looking a lot better. I haven't gotten rid of all of the micro abrasions on the pen, but it's certainly looking better than the cap at the moment. Now let's see about getting this sack on. Lifetime supply of shellac. And our handy sack spreader. Let me give that a bit of a turn. Make sure it's straight. I've already cut this to length, by the way. I'm going to give it a little bit more shellac. Just there. Right in that seam, so no leaks. We'll let that dry, and then we'll talc it up and put it in the pen. Okay, so we've let that dry overnight. And we're going to add a little talc. Position the barrel where we want it. I'm not going to shellac this just yet. I'm going to make sure the pen's working correctly and that sack is installed correctly first before I shellac that section down. And there we go. And here we go with the first writing test. This is Waterman's. Waterman made what looks like three waves of, quote, Skywriter pens. The first wave was after purchasing the brand Aiken Lambert of New York in the late 1930s. It was an inexpensive plastic pen. Then there were these celluloid pens from the mid to late 1940s and early 1950s. And then a series of metal capped plastic barrel pens similar to Waterman Taperites, like this one, which was Waterman's answer to the Parker 51. This second generation Skyrider is fully in the Art Deco styling that was very much in vogue then. So let's look at this pen. Overall, the pen is small and slim by modern standards, measuring exactly 5 inches in length capped and has slightly domed top and bottom finials. It's lever filled with a latex sack, so it's very light, made of swirled green marble celluloid and sports gold plated hardware. From the top, we see the domed finial and then the cap tapers up quickly and is straight for its length to two gold cap bands. The clip has an art deco shape and engraving and is made of folded gold plated metal. And there's no flex in this clip at all. After the cap bands, the celluloid tapers down to the barrel, which is straight for its almost its entire length, and then it tapers away slightly towards the end finial. Manufactured in Canada, 
by Alco Division, L.E. Waterman Company Limited. And the other side of the pen has the spade-shaped gold-plated lever with a good-sized notch. The cap unscrews with one and one quarter turns to reveal a short black plastic section that has a slight flare towards a number five size 14 karat gold nib and black ebonite non-finned feed. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has no branding, but a diamond shape with 14K for the gold content and the letter R, no idea, and Canada at the bottom. The inside of the cap shows a glued in cap liner. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen a full six and one quarter inches in length but that cap weighs next to nothing, so there's no imbalance here at all. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1940s Waterman Skywriter in green celluloid with a Waterman Starlet in honey marble celluloid from the same era. A Schaefer Balance in a red ruby celluloid. That's really nice. An Esterbrook J in blue celluloid and an Eversharp Skyline in burgundy and gold stripe from the 1940s. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see the Watermans are the longest of the group and the Skyline being the shortest of the group. The Skyline is semi-restored. I'll say semi-restored because I got it to the point where I was just about to do a review uh, and the entire section, ink window and top part of the barrel shattered on me. Uh, so it's a total disaster. The nib was very interesting. It is a manifold nib, uh, but uh, the pen cannot be resurrected. It's dead on arrival now. And the blue celluloid Esterbrook J still has the price tag on it because it belongs to Janus. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You can see that these are very short uh, unposted and too short for me to write with. But the Waterman's are not too bad in terms of their length unposted and I think these barrels are the same piece between the Starlet and the Skyrider. They seem to have exactly the same shape. Certainly the sections are the same. And here's that gray marbled celluloid Waterman. I think might be a Starlet but it only has one ring on the cap band and this one has a very rough section on it so I have to work on that and the nib needs some work as well. So you may see this in a future Pen Resurrection Sunday. Depends on whether it falls apart on me like the Skywriter did. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Waterman Skywriter. And it has a 14 karat gold, number five size nib. Some of you have asked how you determine the size of a nib. Well, you simply measure the thickness of the feed at the base in millimeters. And this feed here is exactly five millimeters. And let's check the wetness. You can see that it's lovely and wet. Beautiful. And the nib is very smooth. Even though you can hear what sounds like scratch, it's not. It's feedback from a very, very fine nib that is lovely and smooth. So what surprised me, and what you might have already gleaned from me writing here, is this. Watch this. This is a, an extremely flexible nib. This is what I would call a piece of resistance right here. Look at that line variation. With hardly any pressure at all, just in normal writing, you're getting line variation from this nib. It was surprising and exhilarating. I actually used the Lord's name in vain on several occasions, I know. And I faded away from the first writing sample uh, at the end of the restoration video because I didn't want this writing sample to be anticlimactic. So as to climactic, look at how wet and flexible this nib is. I know, that's what she said.
And the ink today is the only ink that I put in a vintage pen with a latex ink sack, and that's Waterman's Serenity Blue. And that's because it has a pH of 7, which is the same as water. And this nib makes a 0 0.2 millimeter line with no pressure at all. And look at that. That measures up to a 0.9 millimeter thickness line, which makes this pen a Western triple X. That's what she said. Fine to a double broad plus or a Japanese extra fine to I don't know what triple B I don't know off the chart and that's on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description and for our quote And for some reverse writing, not bad at all. Remember, I didn't do anything to that nib. I mean, yes, I polished it up and everything like that, but I didn't do any tweaking to it at all. Any micro mesh, any tine adjustment, anything like that. And some quick writing. It's nicely wet. And even when I'm pushing it, yeah, it's starting to railroad now. But that's a very hungry, hungry nib. So what are my thoughts on this pen resurrection? Well, I was delightfully surprised by this fountain pen restore. I was very pleased that the pen came apart so easily and shined up so beautifully, but I was anxious about how that nib might perform. I didn't even press the nib to paper before I restored the pen leaving the nib's performance as either a happy surprise, a challenge to make it right, or a downright disappointment. When I first touched this nib to paper, nothing came out and my heart sunk. Then I primed the nib a little and the nib just came to life in my hands and it was thrilling. Yes, I get thrilled by a fountain pen. I know, I gotta get out more. The pen is slim, measuring only eight millimeters at the narrowest part of the section, but the section is too small for me anyway. So holding it back here on the barrel where it's about 10 millimeters is much more comfortable. And that length ends up balancing that pen very, very nicely. Very, very comfortable to hold. In this back position with my hand, uh, gives me a lower angle to the page to allow me to flex that nib a little bit more as well and keeps it from digging in on the upstrokes. And this natural no pressure line variation just adds tons of character and flair to your writing. Here's my flair, okay? And this is me expressing myself. It's just so much fun. Such fun! <laughs> and there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra cost to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for just 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. Yummy. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote I made this